Good day class. So we are now on uh, module 6. This is about uh, interpolation, least square approximation, curve fitting, and optimization. But before we start uh, the discussion, please uh, have your scientific calculator first. So I have here my em uh, emulator. So please uh, get first your calculator as well as your notes because i recommend everyone to take down notes while uh, you are watching with this uh, recorded video discussion so please class please uh cooperate now because this is only for your uh, own good so that uh, you will learn something from these topics okay so i hope you have now your scientific calculator and also your notes so let's proceed to lesson one that is about the linear interpolation by the end of this lesson you will be able to determine the equation of a given data or a given data points by using the method of linear interpolation and you'll be able to uh, estimate new data point between or outside a given set of data points using the equation generated by linear interpolation so what's the importance of interpolation since we're dealing with interpolation we're in our first topic is about the first method that is linear interpolation but before going through the linear interpolation let's discuss why is it that this interpolation is very important in our field so scientific research and engineering analysis involve the acquisition and manipulation of numerical data. So if you're doing research, of course, uh, especially in our field, uh, the data that, be, that is being acquired are numerical data. No? So more on quantitative rather, rather than uh, qualitative. So creating a mathematical model from this data cannot be easily formulated analytically. So we cannot uh, go to the conclusion that, okay, uh, our data that is being gathered, okay, we cannot say that our data that's being gathered is or can be modeled as a quadratic equation or a cubic equation. So we cannot uh, conclude that one easily. It's because our data is very random, okay, our data is very random and uh, we cannot um, we cannot represent this one directly into an analytical uh, formula or an analytical equation so let's say we have first data this is the measurement our let's say if x equals to 3 this is our recorded data no then we have 6 then it will drop by 2.91 then 7 like 3.52 so this data are very random so we, we cannot just uh, assume this one that this is of the form f of x is equals to let's say x cubed plus some constant x plus some constant so we cannot model that one directly okay because we need to analyze first like what are the uh, relationships that exist among the dependent variable and also the dependent variable and in uh, in modeling this uh, data that is being acquired we also need to um, to look into the number of data points okay so here based on our data that's being acquired you will frequently encounter no, or have occasion to estimate intermediate values between precise data points because the data that's being acquired as shown in this table uh, it is only uh, limited to these values no like x equals to 1 x equals to 3 x equals 6 x equals 7 what if uh, somebody will ask you like what would be the f of x if x equals to 2 so you don't have any uh, data for that one okay because you only have limited data or data so what you need to do is you're going to estimate intermediate values between that one or we're going to let's say okay it could be or probably somewhere 
somewhere in that particular value. So the uh, method or the way that we're going to uh, apply in order to estimate is the polynom polynomial interpolation because the word interpolation is to estimate a value between two data points, okay? So precisely, so it depends upon the numerical method that is being employed in the polynomial interpolation. So again, the data that is, that is being gathered during a research is only or are only limited to a, uh, to a finite data points. So we need to estimate uh, datas or we need to estimate values between two data points. So we need this polynomial interpolation. So a polynomial interpolation consists of determining the unique nth order polynomial that fits n plus one data points. So this polynomial then provides a formula to compute intermediate values, okay? So again, polynomial interpolation is just like this one. Let's say we have data A data a and we have here data b okay we have here data b. okay we have here data a we have data b so when we say interpolation we need to know uh, the uh, value of the data in between data a and data b okay but for a polynomial interpolation there's a rule like if we're going to represent a uh, a, a certain uh, data into an nth order uh, polynomial, uh, we will need n plus 1 data points. Okay? And then here, there's another rule that there is only one nth order polynomial that fits n plus 1 points. Example, for figure A, we have here the first datum, second datum or data point, so if we have um, two data points, the uh, polynomial that is being generated is only of the first degree because that is n plus 1. So we have here n plus 1 is equals to 2. So our n here is equals to 1. So, so meaning to say if we have um, two data points, the polynomial is linear. So this is linear. Now, if we have 1, 2, 3, as depicted in the second uh, figure, this is figure B. Now, this is n plus 1 equals 3. So, n is equals to 2. So, therefore, if we have um, 3 data points, we can approximate this one or we can represent this one by a quadratic. Okay, quadratic. Um, equation or quadratic function or quadratic uh, polynomial. For the last figure, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have 4 um, data points. By using this formula, no? n plus 1 equals 4, then we have n is equals to 3. So for a 4 data points, we can approximate or estimate th this one using uh, cubic function, cubic polynomial, or cubic equation, so on and so forth. So if we have five, we can represent this, that one as uh, quartic. If we have six, then that is um, quintic, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's proceed to the first one, and the easiest one, the uh, linear interpolation. So the simplest form of interpolation is to connect um, two data points, so that is n plus one, from our uh, from the uh, previous slide so if you're going to represent a set of data by a line so you need two data points at most uh, two data points with a straight line so this method is the linear interpolation so from this figure uh, the uh, the black line represents the uh, the true curve no curve now if we're going to represent this one using a uh, first order equation so we just simply connect these two points one and two so we're going to derive the uh, the formula no 
for the uh, linear interpolation. So if we have um, two data points represented by x sub o or x naught, so the coordinates here is x naught and this is f of x naught or the y. And the second data point is represented by x sub 1 and then f of x sub 1. Okay. So, of course, we want to know, no? We want to know the value between the, these um, two data points. So, since this is a line, recall our um, analytic geometry. Okay. Derivation. So, using the knowledge from um, analytic geometry. We're in, if we have um, two points on a Cartesian plane, so if we're going to uh, find the equation of these two points, then we're going to use the uh, two-point form. So we have um, y, minus um, y sub 1 is equal to the slope. So, m times x minus x sub 1. Or, it's up to your class. You could have the um, the first point or the second point. So, uh, it's up to you. So, here, um, we're going to find the slope. So, the slope here is just the change in y over the change in x and the change in y here is the difference of this one so that is f of x sub 1 minus f of x naught all over the change in x here is simply this one so that is x sub 1 minus x sub naught <coughs> substituting this value to our equation here. Now our y sub 1, it could be f of x1 and then our x sub 1 is uh, the um, x1 or you can use this one. Okay, so you can use this first data points. No, it's the same. Okay, the result is still the same. Now here we are going to let y sub 1 equal to the first data point. So that is f of x naught. So we have y minus f of x naught. Again, um, you can have f of x naught or f of x1. It's still the same. Okay, it's still the same. So, our m here is f of x1 minus f of x naught all over x sub 1 minus x sub naught multiplied by x minus um, this is x sub naught. Okay, so, rearranging this uh, equation, that is the uh, y on the uh, um, left side alone. So, we're going to transpose this one on the other side. So, we have y equals, this is uh, f of x sub 1 minus f of x sub naught all over x sub 1 minus x sub naught multiplied by x minus uh, x sub naught then plus f of x sub naught. So, this is the equation that we have just uh, generated okay, in approximating uh, two data points linearly. Okay. So, we have two data points and this is the uh, equation that would, uh, that would um, give us the ano, or that we're going to use to uh, approximate a value between this, um, these two data points. So we're going to use this equation. So this is how we are going to derive the, uh, ano, the uh, linear um, polynomial using analytic geometry. So um, there is no koan, wala yung mga lesod rin yung mga terms. Just remember the formula for the point and the slope. So let's have our first example. So this is from a steam table. No? The data that's being shown in the table is from a steam table. So find thou a first degree function that relates the temperature and the specific volume 
so that is at saturated vapor using the information inside the table shown below so we're given this data and we'll know of course that the um, the actual um, curve for the the temperature being uh, related to our specific volume is a curve gid in a straight line but here um, we are going to uh, approximate no approximate this curve in a linear fashion because this is of a first degree okay as being mentioned in our problem first degree function only so if we're going to approximate that one in a first degree function again we need at least we need at least uh, two data points so we have our two data points we have at a temperature of 0 0.01 degrees celsius and at a temperature of 5 degrees celsius and we have here the corresponding uh, specific volume at saturated vapor condition so following our formula that we have just derived from the previous slide that is um, y equals um, we have the slope here so we have f of um, x sub 1 minus f of x naught all over um, this is x sub 1 minus x sub naught multiplied by x minus um, this is x sub naught plus f of x sub naught again um, this is just the formula that we have just derived from the previous slide but here um, the variables are different that is in terms of temperature and in terms of the specific volume at saturated vapor condition so we're going to replace that one so that it would fit to our example so our uh, dependent variable here is vg because um, uh, this is, uh, I mean, this um, this entity here in thermodynamics is of course depends upon the temperature no, of the the water or the steam. So that is Vg. So Vg is equal to this is Vg of T1. Okay, that is Vg of the temperature one minus this is Vg of temperature zero or t naught or the first data all over t1 minus t naught times t minus t naught plus vg of t naught here uh, we're going to kind of we're going to um, indicate uh, the values for our constant here so we have t naught equals 0 0.01 we have t1 equals 5 this is in degrees celsius in degrees celsius and we have our f of um t naught that is this one 206 okay that is 206 that is in a cubic meter per kilogram and we have oh no this is not f that is vg Okay, this is VG. So we have VG, then VG of T1, that is equal to 147.03 cubic meter per kilogram. Okay, <coughs> substituting this value, we have VG equals, VG of T1 is 147.03 minus we have 206 divided by 5 minus 0 0.01 times t minus 0 0.01 plus um, 206. Simplifying this one further, we're going to use our calculator. Simplifying first the slope, 147.03 minus 206 divided by 5 minus 0 0.01. The result is um, that is one four seven zero three two hundred six. So that is negative five eight nine seven over four four nine. That is negative five eight 
97 over 4 that is 499 so we have 499 t minus 0 0.01 plus 206 simplifying this one further so that the the parenthesis will be removed so we have negative 5897 over 499 t and then combining the constant no? so let's combine the constant we have this one this one to be multiplied by this 0 0.01 so magiging positive okay that is answer multiplied by negative 0 0.01 and then plus another constant this one 206 so plus 206 the result is 206.11818 so plus 206 point one one eight one eight so up to one two three four five decimal places lang ta so this is now the the function that would estimate the given data and this function is a linear function that is of the first degree only okay so if somebody asks you to estimate the uh, value of the specific volume at saturated vapor condition that is between this range no this uh okay uh here's a catch no for our estimated function this would only work okay this would only work between this range of temperature that is between 0 0.01 and 5. now if the temperature is greater than 5 then you cannot use this function anymore okay so if ever somebody asks you to estimate the vg at four degrees celsius so we can or you can use this one but of course uh, it has a corresponding error because this is only a linear estimate okay so again this would only work uh, at a temperature between 0 0.01 and 5. next uh, predict the, the value of vg at three degrees celsius this is a follow-up question from example one now, since we already derived, no, derived the uh, formula of Vg in terms of temperature from the preceding example, so we're going to use uh, those uh, those formula, no, or those uh, equation. So that is Vg equals so negative five eight nine seven over four nine nine. So negative five eight. 97 all over 499t then plus 206.11818 so plus 206.11818 so here we're going to predict vg at t equals 3 so that is at t equals 3 degrees celsius now it is justifiable that we can use this linear um, function because the uh, 3 degrees Celsius lies between our given data points that is between 0 0.01 and 5 so substituting negative 5897 over 499 times 3 plus 206.11818 the resulting specific volume is we have negative sorry ac negative 5897 over 499 times 3 degrees celsius plus 206.11818 so the specific volume is around 170.67 so 170.67 cubic meter per kilogram and this value is somewhat closer okay or somewhat justifiable from this given data no? because 170 is between 206 and 147 but of course this is just an estimate not the true value so next we have another example so i, I hope you learn something from this one no so please 
uh, take down notes. Let's proceed to the third example. So we're going to estimate the natural log of 2 using linear interpolation. So it is expected that uh, our final answer has an error. Why? It's because the behavior of a logarithmic function is a curve. So here, our goal is to uh, represent this one using linear interpolation. So a curve and a line is a two different entity, therefore an error. So first, perform the computation by interpolating between loan of 1, that is 0, and loan of 6 equals this number. Then, repeat the procedure, but use a smaller interval from loan of 1 to loan of 4. Note that the true value of loan of 2 is 0 0.6931472. So this example number 3 is an application for our second learning outcome that is um, out from the derived function. So gikan atong atong na derived nga uh, linear function. So we're going to use that one to estimate uh, values between the ano, between the two given data points. So the same thing that we have um, performed or we have solved from the previous um, example or from the previous slide. Now to visualize this one, uh, let's plot this no so that you can map uh, you can map the problem on say nature a problem. So here this is log of two. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, log of 2 is... So, log of 2. This is log of 2. Very curved. curvature. Now, starting from... Um, loan of 1. Oh, sorry, this is natural log. So, this is loan. This is not log of 2 because... Na ay natural dari ang word. So, this is loan. So, this is the... Fun, uh, the representation of the uh, loan function. This is y equals loan of loan of x. Now we're going to estimate now at zero. Now the first uh, the first koan first goal is or the first interval is loan of one and loan of six. So that is here somewhere here six. So nadri ah. And the bottom estimate is linear lang. So it is expected nga nagi error. So we're going to estimate loan of 2. So somewhere here na anto. So money ato makuha expected. And this is the true value, of course. So na ay gap. And if there's a gap, there's an error. And the next step is by um, reducing the interval. That is, instead of loan of 1 to 6, loan of 1 to loan of 4 na lang. So 4 is somewhere here. Bali ang ato ah, na diri ah, ang linya magyana na. Okay? So, much closer na siya. And reduce ang ihang error. So, solution. First is, by using the first interval, no? That is, we have our x naught. What is our x naught? That is 1. Okay? Because this is y as a function of ln of x. So x naught is 1. We have our x that is 2 because that is the value that we're going to estimate. How about our x1? So x1 is equal to 6. And we have f of x naught that is ln of 1 given here 0. And our f of x that is to be kind of to be acquired or to be find so manat ang goal and our f of x sub 1 equal to this so 1.791759 okay so using our formula that we have just derived we have here f of x is just equal to we have the slope so that is f of x1 minus f of x0 all over x1 minus x0 multiplied by x minus x0 plus 
f of x naught. Okay, substituting values we have 1.791759 minus this is 0, this is 6 minus 1, then we have our x. So, what's the value of our x? That is 2. So, 2 minus x naught is 1 plus our f of x naught is 0. So, plus 0. So, what would be the answer? We're going to use our calculator. So, AC, we have 1.791759 minus 0. So, okay, like this one, 6 minus 1 times 2 minus 1 is just simply 1. So, the result is 0 0.35835. So, 0, 0 0.35835. Okay, so this is our answer for our uh, first goal, no, or for the first given interval, so f of x. Now, let's try the second given interval. That is, we're going to reduce, no, the uh, the uh, increment of x. So x not still the same one. Our x still the same too, but this time our x sub one is reduced to 4 then f of x naught is 0 f of x to be find and then f of x1 is this one 1.386294 so using again this same formula f of x that is equal to f of x1 minus f of x0 all over x1 minus x0 multiplied by x minus x0 plus f of x0. So, substituting the values, we have 1.386294 minus 0 divided by x sub 1 is 4 minus 2 times uh, x here is 2 so 2 minus 1 plus 0 so the answer is using our calculator we have um, 1.386294 minus 0 4 minus 2 multiplied by 2 minus 1 is just 1 plus 0 so we have 0 0.693147 so 0 0.693147 so 693147 okay so this is at f of 2 now as you can observe based on this um two interval we can say that uh, the second interval is much closer to the true value which is 0 0.6931472 so if we're going to use our uh, linear estimate make sure that the uh, interval is much closer to our um, x okay our x here is 2 so if you are going to use an interval that is very far from our target that is 2 so it is expected that the value also um, contains lots of errors so the 0 0.35 is very far from 0 0.69 whereas if we're going to move closer let's say if we're going to reduce our interval towards our target so it is expected that we're going we can reduce the error okay so as you can see here we have here the table, uh, I mean the the uh, function or the graph of our function. This, the, the block here is the uh, the original function that is f of x equals ln of x. As you notice, the first line here, this is the f of x1 that is at 6. And this is our um, estimated uh, value, the first one, very far from the true value. 
okay and the second one is much closer so the error reduces okay that is one way of improving the uh, the kind of the accuracy of our linear interpolation method okay so i hope uh you understand this part and then i hope you take down notes so let's proceed to the uh, second lesson for this module that is about quadratic interpolation so by the end of this lesson you will be able to determine the equation of a given data points by using the method of quadratic interpolation and the second one is i will be able to estimate new data point between or outside a given set of data points what i'm trying to to uh, to highlight here is is that um uh the kind of the the estimation or the approximation is not um limited only between the given kind of quantity points we can also use that that one to estimate a uh, new data point outside okay so that the uh, term that is being applied if we're going to use that one outside the two data points is extrapolation so if that is in between a given set of data points that is interpolation again interpolation and extrapolation okay so we are now on quadratic interpolation again for a quadratic interpolation the n here is equal to 2 that is second degree function and if we're going to use this method make sure that the number of data points that you have is at least n plus 1 so that is 3 okay 3 data points if you have 2 data points only then you cannot use this method so for quadratic now there is a drawback no for linear as stated in the first statement the problem from the previous method is the fact that straight line is obviously erroneous to approximate curve line of course if we're going to draw that one from the uh, loan of two and if this is our first this is our second data point if we're going to connect that one using a line of course there is a great error here as shown in this shaded portion that is the magnitude of the error so next to improve the estimate a second order polynomial or known as the quadratic polynomial or a parabola is used to introduce some curvature into the line connecting the points okay so the quadratic polynomial is represented by this function okay is represented by this function now um sir uh, where can you get this um this expression this mathematical expression so going back sa ato ang uh, function kaganihan no if you have three points so just like this one this is our curve of course this is represented by x naught and f of uh, x naught this is our um ano this is our in between Okay, and this is um, x1, f of x1. And this is, of course, x2, f of x2. Okay, now, this is quadratic because we have b not this is the coefficient of the constant, plus b1, x minus x0, plus b2, the coefficient of the second increment that is x minus x naught times x minus x1 now as you notice um, at first uh, we cannot directly tell that this is quadratic because if you look at the a degree of the x here okay the degree is one however we can still manipulate this one in order to arrive uh, an expression that is similar to the normal nga quadratic 
uh, kwano, equation that you are used to. That is, diba, in the form of f of x equals to, that is, a sub naught plus a sub 1 x plus a sub 2 x squared. Okay, we have the constant, the coefficient of x, and then the coefficient of x squared. Now, let's try to simplify this one so that we can arrive this expression. So, let's do that. This equal to b naught plus b sub 1 x minus b sub 1 x naught plus uh, b sub 2. Now, let's try to distribute this one. One by one, we have x squared minus x naught x. Then this one, we have minus x1 x. Okay, x1 x plus, okay, this one multiplied x naught x1. Okay, so combining the constant, combining the coefficient of the middle term. Now for the constant, start tayo sa constant, we have b naught, this is constant, this is constant, so minus b1 x naught. What else? We have here, ah, we have here the last one, so that is plus b2 x naught x1. Next, the coefficient of x or the middle term. So, let's try to find uh, terms that involves x. So, we have here b1. b1. What else? Uh, this one. b negative b2 x naught. Okay. What else? This one. Negative b2 x1. And then finally, for the last term that is in terms of x squared, we have only one. This one, b2 times x squared. So that is plus b2 x squared. Now, if we're going to reduce this one no, to this form, now we can say that Okay, we can say that a sub naught is equal to the constant term here. We have b naught minus b1 x naught plus b2 x naught x1. And for our a sub 1, so our a sub 1 is equal to this. Okay, so we have b1 minus b naught x, a b2 x naught minus b2 x sub 1. And for our um, coefficient of x squared, it's just the same as b naught. Okay. So, these are the uh, k expressions that you need to remember. No? So, uh, the uh, main question here is that how are we going or how can we find the values for our b naught b1 and b2 because if we already have a formula for these three coefficients then we can solve for a0 a1 and a2 so that we can generate the general equation for a quadratic polynomial okay so again uh, the derivation started with this expression here as i have shown to you this one so Try to remember this expression for quadratic interpolation. Okay, so the in, in, in the next slide, we are going to uh, derive the formula for each of these three coefficients. That is for B0, B1, and B2. Okay, solving for the coefficients. So finding uh, B0 again for a quadratic, we need at least... Um, we need at least uh, three, ano, three data points. So finding um, B not. So in the uh, preceding slide, the uh, quadratic representation is expressed as f of x. That is equal to we have B not plus B one x minus x not plus b2 x minus x naught times x minus x1. Okay? Tama ba? 
Okay, sakto. So here, to solve for um, B not class, uh, we need to ano, we need to eliminate uh, those terms. No, we need to eliminate the the terms that involves B one and B two, so that uh, we can only arrive a, an expression that is in terms of B not and in terms of the other variables. So to do that, now we can let x equals x naught. So why I do this? Because if we're going to use this one, if we're going to substitute this one in our equation, then the second term and the third term will become zero. Okay? So f of x naught na pwede diri. Ah, kay x mana. Equal b naught plus b1. Again, x naught minus x naught, zero. Plus here, b2 times this is zero. But this one is x naught minus x1. Okay, but all in all, this would become zero. So therefore, our b naught is just equal to the f of x naught. Okay, mone siya ay mohang i-remember. That is for our um, b naught. Now, let's have for b1. So for b1, again, going back to our... Um, to our uh, original expression no? that is f of x equals b naught plus b1 times x minus x naught plus b2 then x minus x naught times x minus x1 okay so here um let's try to to cancel some terms now we don't need to cancel b naught because um uh, we already defined no, the value of B0. So it's okay if we cannot cancel the term that involves B0 because we already found a, an expression for B0. So the, uh, the challenge here is to cancel the term that involves B2 because uh, we don't know yet the value for B2. But by observation, uh, the the easiest way to cancel the term that involves B naught, or the easiest way to cancel the third term, is by uh, letting x equals. So what would be the value of our x here? Para makancel niya zero. So we we cannot do x equals x naught ha, because B one will be also cancelled, cancelled siya. So um, ang last resort ni mo is x equals x one. Because B0 will be cancelled, I mean B2 will be cancelled, but B1 has a value. So, substituting this, it will become f of x1 equals a B0 plus B1 multiplied by x sub 1 minus x0. Then plus B2, this is x1 minus x0, this is x1 minus x1. So, this would become zero because of this expression right here. So, um, rearranging this one, it will become b1 equals f of x1, I hope you can still follow, minus b0. So, I'll just transpose this one and then I divide this expression by this one. So, x1 minus x0. Now, uh, we can still uh, simplify this one no? because from the preceding um, slide, we know that b naught is we know that b naught is f of x naught. Okay, so that is f of x naught. Therefore, this is f of x one minus f of x naught all over x one and x naught. This is our B1. Now, if you are uh, very observant enough, now you can notice some pattern for the formula that we have just um, generated for our B1. Because this expression is similar to the slope. Okay, This is similar to the slope of a line that connects x0 and x1. So therefore, we can represent that one as f of um, x1, x0. 
okay so this representation is very useful in numerical methods this is used by the uh, newtons kuano newtons divide uh, divided difference polynomial class uh, we we use this method class it's because this is the um, the fundamental no F fundamental kanang kuan, or this is the backbone of the newtons divided difference polynomial when we say newton divided difference polynomial that is used to quant class that is used to estimate or represent a uh, set of data into a nth order polynomial now the uh, newton divided difference polynomial is not limited to quadratic so if you have uh, 100 data points so we can use the newton divided difference nga algorithm or formula in order to arrive a 99th uh, degree nga polynomial because remember n plus 1 tayo okay so we employ this one because uh, this method of derivation is under newton's divided difference polynomial don't worry because that topic is or to be covered in the next uh, module so again this is the representation f of kanisang brace then x1 x0 so it represents the slope or another thing it represents the first derivative because the slope is the first derivative that is for b1 first derivative or slope next for b2 so going back f of x equals b0 plus b1 x minus x0 plus b2 x minus x0 times x minus um this is x sub 1 okay so what would be uh, our an algebraic manipulation so that we can solve for um for our b2 so diba we have um three data points we have for x naught we have for x1 and we have for x2 so um the only thing that is being left for our substitution is x2 because we haven't used the x2 yet we already use x0 and x1 so therefore we let again x equals x2 okay so here it would become f of x2 equals b0 plus b1 x2 minus x0 and then this is our b2 so plus b2 times x2 minus x0 times x2 minus x1 okay solving for b2 if we're going to uh, modify or by algebraic manipulation b2 is equal to we have f of x2 minus uh, b0 is equal to f of x0 so f of x0 minus na for b1 that is the slope so the slope we have f of x1 minus f of x0 all over x1 minus x0 multiplied by this one so we have x2 minus x0 all over this one so we have x2 minus x0 times x2 minus x1 now by manipulating this expression class because this is a little bit complex by newton's divided difference uh kind of polynomial algorithm no now we can um turn this expression into this one very simple no and uh can I remember the name so that is f of x2 minus um that is 
um, f of x not. Okay, so that is f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1 minus this is f of x1 minus f of x0 all over x1 minus x0 all over this is x2 minus x0 as you notice class uh, this one is the this one oh can you share so we're going to encircle this one so that it will be um emphasize so this one is a slope okay this is a slope between x sub 2 and x sub 1 and also this one between x sub not and x sub 1 and this one is the change between x sub not and x sub 2 so this is another slope form okay it's another slope form but of the first order or in short this is the second derivative so the bar for b1 that is the first derivative okay f of x1 minus f of x0 over x1 minus x0 but here at uh, the slope okay or the difference of the slope is being ano, is being reflected in the numerator and that is the definition for the second derivative of a given function so again for b1 that is the first derivative for b2 that is the second derivative and this is the formula so try to familiarize this formula and of course if you if you forget this so i uh, just remember the notation no? if it is comfortable for you to remember the uh, notation by newton's divided difference polynomial we can represent this one as f brace x2 x1 then x0 and this is further be simplified as f of um, x2 x1 minus f of x1 x0 all over uh, x2 minus x0 remember our notation for f of x1 x1 is the slope so as represented by this and f of x1 comma x0 is still another slope as represented by this one all over x2 minus x0 so this representation this notation is used by newton's divided difference polynomial okay so i hope um you will remember this okay and i hope you have taken down notes in this section okay so next uh another thing maybe you have wondered why we use this one so we use this because uh, we follow the uh, algorithm that is being used by uh, newton no? so our traditional technique in determining the equation is by using the linear systems of equations like using matrices or Kramer's rule to solve for the coefficients of a quadratic polynomial let's say we have here three points uh, let's say we have a b we have c d and then we have e f and then of course we are going to um we're going to estimate or we're going to represent these three data points using quadratic polynomial so our traditional way is of course uh, writing our quadratic equation we have a i mean we're going to use another 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 um, letter so let's say this is this one is um I sorry this is gx squared plus hx plus i so our goal here is to solve for the coefficients of x squared which is g coefficient of x which is h and a constant i using this um three uh data points so our traditional way is of course using every every points 
okay every points and since we have um kind of three points so it is it is expected that we can generate three um equations and that is linear systems of equations and we already discussed the topics for kramer's rule then we can arrive the quadratic polynomial but of course i will not allow you to use that one because we already discussed that now for our examination i encourage you to use the newton divided difference polynomial algorithm okay so th because this is very useful for our next module so this is the traditional way because let's say for our first equation substituting y y here is b equal to g our x is a so that is g a squared plus h a plus i second equation is by utilizing this so that is d equals g c squared plus h c plus i and for the third equation using the third point we have f equals g e squared plus h e plus i and using kramer's rule or it depends upon you like um you can uh, use a matrix inversion or you can have the gaussian elimination or gauss jordan it's up to you so this is that the traditional way okay of uh finding a, a polynomial that would fit a given set of data points so let's have an example let's apply the newton divided difference for quadratic uh, interpolation for our example number four so here fit a second order polynomial to the three points as shown below so we have three points x not x1 x2 so solution first is of course we are going to um write the uh, no, write the equation for the quadratic interpolation that is y in terms of um a not plus um a one x plus a sub two x squared so during our derivation we found out that a naught is equal to um b naught okay that is b naught minus b one x naught and then plus b two x naught x one and then our a one is equal to b1 minus uh, b2 x not minus uh, b2 x1 and then our a2 is just simply um, b2 okay so here um, uh, let's go uh, no? let's find the uh, values for our b not b1 and b2 starting with b not our b naught is just simply f of x naught and what is f of x naught that is zero okay so therefore our b naught is zero next for our b1 again our b1 is just the slope or the first derivative okay don't forget and again that is evaluated from x naught to x1 so b1 is the slope that is f of x1 minus f of x0 all over x1 minus x0. So our f of x1 from the table that is 1.386294 minus f of x0 is 0 all over x1 is 4 minus 1. So using our calculator we have 1.386294 minus 0 so 4 minus 1 that is 0 0.462098 0 0.462098 okay next uh, for our um, b2 again our b2 is the second derivative so 
So for our second derivative, that is for the numerator, is I mean intended for the change of the slope. So B2 is the change of the slope or all over um, x2 minus x0. And for the change of the slope, that is the slope for x0 and x1 and x1 and x2. So that is f of x2 minus f of x1 all over x2 minus x1 minus f of x1 minus f of x0 all over x1 minus x0 divide by x2 minus x0. So this is equivalent to so um, ato i-plug in ang mga values. f of x2 is 1.79 1.759 minus x1 is 1.386294 all over um, x2 minus x1 that is 6 minus 4 minus the second slope. So we already um, solved for the second slope which is b1 so this one so, what na lang 0 0.462098, okay? All over x2 minus x0, so x2 is 6 minus 1, so 6 minus 1. And our b2 is, so using our calculator, AC, so we have 1.791759, Three eight six and two nine four divide by six minus four minus zero point four six four six twenty ninety eight divide by six minus one. So the result is negative zero point zero five one eight seven. So negative zero point zero five one eight seven. 3, 1. Okay, 3, 1. So, having this um, values for B0, B1 to B2, we are now ready to solve for A0, A1, and A2. So, for A0, we have this expression. So, simply, come on, use your calculator. So, AC for A0, that is B0. So, what's our B0? 0. 0. Minus B1 down. So, yung B1 is this one. So, 0 0.462098. Ima multiply by X0. So, our X0 is 1. So, nod plus our B2. So, negative 0. Uh, we put parenthesis. So, negative 0 0.051. 8731 multiply down by x0 which is 1 and x1 which is 4 so money ang answer for a0 negative 0 0.66959 so negative 0 0.66959 0 4 so 0 4 then we have our a1 Using the formula from above, this one, B1 minus B2. So, our B1 is 0 0.462098 minus B2 X0. So, B2 is negative 0 0.051871 times X0 is 1. And then, minus B2. Okay. So, still B2 minus negative 0 0.0518731 times x1, x1 is 4. Okay, the result is 0 0.72146, so 0 0.721435, 35. so 35. And lastly, our a sub 2 is just simply b2. Our B2 is negative 0 0.051831.
So therefore, our uh, second order polynomial that would fit the given set of data is x f of x equals starting with x squared lang tano. So we have negative 0 0.05 18731 x squared plus a1 that is for x so plus 0 0.721465 x plus the constant or that is minus 0 0.669590 so this is the uh, second order polynomial that would fit the given uh, the given three points data points okay so that is how you are going to solve this kind of problem so this is the uh, no, the graph that would show the second order polynomial so the uh, black line represents the original function this blue line solid blue line represents our quadratic estimate and when we are going to evaluate at a certain value let's say at x equals to 2 we found out that this is much closer to the true value okay and then our linear estimate from 0 to the first point uh mas dako yang error compared for the quadratic estimate again if we're going to increase the order of the of the polynomial that we're going to estimate then the error would also reduce but not all the time because there are some functions that uh, increasing the order of the polynomial will not improve the estimate so we're going to learn that one in the next topics okay so let's have an exercise so try to get your pen and your notes and also your scientific calculator so try this one class so use linear interpolation and quadratic interpolation to estimate the value of the specific volume that is at saturated vapor at t equals 3 degrees celsius using the table below so this is our given table we have temperature pressure saturated liquid for a specific volume and saturated vapor for the specific volume solve also the true percentage relative error to determine which method is relatively accurate now since we have true percentage relative error we are going to use an application no? an application that would give a value for a specific volume at saturated vapor for 3 degrees celsius now i'm, I'm using a steam table no? from an application and don't worry i will give the true value here so again um you can pause the video no so starting with linear interpolation so try using linear interpolation so again if linear interpolation you only need two uh, data points if the given is three then it's common sense since um three degrees celsius lang tayo so it is better to choose the interval from 0 0.01 to 5. you may choose 0 0.01 to 10 but of course uh the error will uh, increase the magnitude of the error will increase so choose wisely then for the quadratic of course we need three set of data points so this one so for linear interpolation the polynomial um ito yung generate nyo na equation okay so this one and then i think i have um i commit some mistake in this part this part okay so try to review lang and then for quadratic interpolation polynomial this is your um kind of this is your b not b1 and b2 okay so if you um if you arrive this answer then you're correct and then this is your um uh, quadratic polynomial that would uh, represent this given data so 206.1336 minus 13.660 plus 0 0.3679 t square okay so next uh can I pause the video and try to use this true value for vg and solve for the 
to percentage relative error as well as the value of VG at T equals 3 degrees Celsius. So if you're done, then um, try to check your answer by using the answers here. So for linear interpolation polynomial, the VG at 3 degrees Celsius is 170.65 with a corresponding uh, true percentage relative error of 1.57%. For quadratic, we have VG 168.45. As you notice, this is much closer to our true value with an estimated uh, or with a uh, true percentage relative error of 0.26%. So very obvious that the uh, quadratic interpolation polynomial dominates over the linear uh, interpolation polynomial. Okay, So if we are going to uh, increase the number of beta points, so we can also improve the accuracy of our estimate. So I hope you learned something from this video and thank you for watching and may God bless you.